Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Man, I break it down to bite-sized pieces. So today, the big question that I keep getting or we keep getting is really twofold is, is the bull run coming to an end? Are we going to enter into a bear cycle? And should I keep dollar cost averaging? And there's a couple of different factors. And what I want to do was bring in uh, CJ Reichel from Market Rebellion. CJ, thanks for coming on again. Just to take a look at uh, some technicals and also to take a look at the macro to see where we are at and where we are going. So CJ, again, thanks so much for, for coming in. I appreciate your time as you're in lovely Puerto Rico, as everybody else seems to be going to. So thanks for coming by. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me. It's a pleasure always to be on the channel. And those are really uh, legitimate concerns. You know, is the bull market over? How far in the bull market are we? And I think uh, that last question that you mentioned about should I start, should I stop dollar cost averaging? Um, it depends on each individual's goals, right? Um, you know, Rob and I do not have, we probably have different levels of risk tolerance and goals when it comes to how we want to plan for the future of our finances, et cetera. So exactly. with that in mind, um, let's, just, let's just keep that in mind while we go through the analysis here. Um, but I think the first thing to understand about where we are in the market cycle is to understand how the stock to flow model has modeled scarcity in Bitcoin's history and has been so accurate at timing uh, where the market cycle is getting much overheated and where it's probably a good time to start taking some off the table. So the stock to flow model is based around the halving cycles and each halving cycle um, occurs when we reach this uh, purple color right here. So we had our most recent halving oh, in nice. May of 2020. And uh, now we've gone ever since. As you can see, this is essentially where we were at in 2017, where we are in our current cycle. So we were at a price of roughly $1,000 or closer to maybe $2,000. That would be our equivalent of where we are now relative to where we were in the 2017 cycle. So I think the thing that's most compelling about this is that we may not even be at the next bear market low that would occur hypothetically, you know, in 2024 or 2025 in a macro market cycle. So that's very interesting. And that what's partially what leads me to believe that we're not even close to the end of the bull market cycle. Um, we are probably about halfway to 60%. I see us really um, where I plan to take capital off the table and scale out is when we start reaching this green period of time, or essentially when we become 800 days or roughly a thousand days until the next Bitcoin block having. So that's a very general principle. Um, a lot of people are looking at this in the space and are all making decisions based around this one model. Um, so I think that it's very important and, and very important to understand when allocating capital in the crypto space. Yeah, so real um, quick, so sorry to interrupt, but just like you said, like a lot of people are looking into this and probably gonna do the same thing. So when we did the, our, our, our TA intro, we talked about how like everybody's looking at the same thing. When you have the same group think, even if it's right or wrong, it still happens. And you don't have to really you know, know it or, do, or, or, or second guess yourself. You're like, well, that's what everybody else is looking at. This is what's gonna happen. You can go against the grain. But sometimes it's just like, well, everybody else is seeing the same thing. So sure. And what's interesting about this one is that like you talked about right now, Bitcoin's price days, it's uh, May 4th, I think it's around $56,000, $57,000. So you're saying that in the next bull run or the next bear market where it's going to drop down, maybe in 2022 at some point, you think it's going to be above 56000 maybe at a 70, 75000 who knows? Yes. Because gotcha. if we look at it uh, and how we played out in our last cycle, and there's actually merit to why this could be like a potential super cycle. I know Dan Held has wrote a lot about the potential super cycle. Um, I still want to play it conservatively because I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want to, you don't have to sell the perfect top. You know, you don't have to sell the perfect top to make money. Um, you know, as long as you're in early and you've seen this market play out. Um, I still think there's a lot of opportunity left. Um, but like you said, uh, Rob, you know, our equivalent of where we were last cycle is probably about 
a thousand or fifteen hundred, and that would be like pretty much the same price, you know, in relative yeah. terms as our current. Yet when we fell down, we went to three thousand, which was twice the amount we were at, you know, relative to our current point. So what I'm saying is that we may go, we may not even retrace like a hundred k um, in the next bear market. So it's going to yeah. be very interesting, um, especially based on this chart. Yeah. So, so real quick, let me, let me share something with everybody. I'm going to share a screen. So what CJ was just talking about is exactly correct. This is the same thing that I talk about. He uses stock to flow. I just use a little basic model where I talk about the having all time high dips and resets. This is in 2012 to 2015. Same thing happened in 2016, 2017, same different thing, right? But the one thing to notice is that in 2020, 2021, where we're at right now, I think in all honesty, that we are right slab dab in the middle. Let me show you. Uh, oh, this isn't it. Yeah. So this is essentially taking a look back at 2017. And if you're investing right now, I always think like the best time is when it's boring as hell and nothing's really going on and we're in a bear market, dollar cost average. The second best time is, I think it's right here. So look at July, 2017. I mean, we're only in May. So we're actually down here somewhere. So what, so what, what CJ is saying is that, you know, at this point, this price point, I think Bitcoin was around 2000, 2500 bucks. And then I wanted to like, I think around here was around, no, here's 5,000 right around here was 3000. So in July, August, sometime around there, that's when, if you look at the models, th this is where it could be. Now it doesn't guarantee uh, future uh, success or, 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 or future uh, duplicity, but if we take a look at them, it could be uh, what it is. So that's how I see it. And that's the big question as far as like, well, should I stop dollar cost averaging? Because what if it goes down right now? It's at 56,000. What if it goes on to 35, 40? Well, if you dollar cost average, it kind of doesn't make any sense, but Maybe it does go up to 75K. So that part, I got you. Makes sense. What else do we got to go over? Well, you brought up Bitcoin dominance and, uh, you know, how the capital flow in the space has sort of changed throughout market cycles. And so this goes more in depth than, than just Bitcoin. This has to do with how I position myself in altcoins and how I think you should think about the altcoin market as we progress further on in the bull market cycle. So what I have outlined here is a chart of Bitcoin's percentage of the overall cryptocurrency market cap. So I think we're at like over 2 trillion now. Um, you know, Bitcoin is just under uh, 50%. Um, but as you can see in the bear market of both 2015, 2016, and then of course, in uh, 2018 and 2019, that is when um, ideally it would have been most profitable, not profitable, but it would have been the best to be in Bitcoin relative to all the other altcoins because they were all bleeding capital very, very highly. And yeah. uh, Bitcoin was the best at preserving capital. But as you can see, right as we entered the heart of the bull market, and this was the ICO mania in 2016, Bitcoin dominance just dropped off of a cliff and went all the way down to a low of like 30%. And simultaneously, uh, we actually had the inverse occurring in Ethereum dominance. So yeah. Ethereum during the max and the, the heights of the ICO bubble, um, we actually had an Ethereum dominance that consisted of 30% of the overall market cap. And so you can see that the exact same thing is happening. People are building on Ethereum, DeFi, and all of those interesting projects are actually coming to fruition and getting people really excited about the space. And I think the primary difference between where we were back here and where we are now is that all of those projects were, you know, just future promises. They're saying, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do innovation, yeah. um, you know, and now we actually have real DeFi projects delivering with amazing, interesting stuff like yield farming and, uh, and it's just very exciting how capital is moving in the space. Um, but as you can see, back to the Bitcoin dominance, this is really showing us that we're, we're accelerating into more of the heart of the bull market based mm -hmm. on the fact that Bitcoin dominance is dropping. I expect it to continue to drop and go far below its previous low at 36%, because I think there's more capital in the space ever before 
And the exponential gains that are going to provide the five to 10 to 20 or even 50 X are likely gonna be found in smaller altcoin projects and DeFi projects, as opposed to Bitcoin, which may be the safer play, but when we model it out, it's looking like, you know, 200 K, which would roughly be, you know, a three or four X. Um, so the exponential really speculative gains I see are still found in the altcoin market. And that's re represented when people have Bitcoin, they hold it throughout the bear market. And then once they get profit in that, uh, when the bull market starts, they start to transfer assets and take those profits and put them into more speculative risk on assets like DeFi and like other things throughout the Ethereum and Binance chain ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, before we go on, this is just all investment opinion. This is not investment advice, entertainment purposes only, all that good stuff. Like uh, you still have to do your own research. This all looks good. There's a lot of information out there that you have to take a look at. This is just your starting point. That is for sure. So that is the big thing. Hey, CJ, you show me a, um, a quick slide about how things move into from Bitcoin. Can you show that or you can't show that? Um, I'll show it. Okay. I'll show it. Um, because this doesn't have to do a lot with strategy, but it essentially is a nice diagram of what I was just talking about. Um, so this is you. When do you show this, and who do you show this to as your your intro? Yeah. So this is a little bit about of our like investment strategy and how we look at a lot of like assets in the space when it comes to how capital flows, and essentially um, what we saw historically and. We're actually starting to see less and less of this because we're seeing initial capital not come into assets like Bitcoin. We're seeing initial capital from first time retail investors start to come into things like Dogecoin. Um, but this, this model is still uh, pretty accurate for the most part in the sense of how capital flows throughout the space. We either have capital coming in from Bitcoin or Ethereum at the start of the cycle. Right. These are high beta assets. And then once those gains are sort of recognized in the beginning of the bull market cycle, when we have that initial run to 20K to 30 and 40K, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of those assets then transfer to Ethereum and go into the moderate beta and high beta assets um, and ultimately flow into ignition assets, which are things that you'll find on like Uniswap or Binance Chain and, you know, very high risk on assets that have done like, 20x and, and things of that sort. But generally, once the bear market comes, all of those uh, speculative gains have a tendency to flow back into both Bitcoin and then both into Ethereum. Go yeah. ahead, Rob. Yeah, so I was going to say, so like, it, it's in, I always call Bitcoin the, uh, the the gateway crypto, but it seems like more and more we're looking into a Dogecoin, but more, more specifically an Ethereum because when you put in Ethereum, you can go to Uniswap and get whatever you want to, depending on even where you know your, your countries are. But when you talk about the, these large cap assets, where it goes from moderate from Ethereum to moderate beta to large cap assets, you're talking about Ethereum to like um, a chain link, a uh, like a V chain, uh, something in the top thirty, right? And yeah. So a large a large cap asset, I would consider anything over five billion in total market cap. And then, and then it flows from there to like these really small ones, like chain games and, and like stuff you see in like the top 300, 400 market cap, but like way far down because there's a lot of gains to be had. I think just like in 2017, I mean, if you invested into a Bitcoin a thousand, you know, hey, you 20X at the very end, good for you. But if you would invest it into something like small, small caps, I mean, take your pick of whatever it is, everything just flowed into there and you could have done 100, 200, 300 X. Again, investment opinion, not investment advice. And uh, that's how I see things. So these days, what I, what I look at is Ethereum is crushing it because Ethereum is the one that you need to go to all the different DEXs to get your crazy ass <laughs> cryptos, right? But if you, you can also use Binance Chain, PancakeSwap, use on, 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 on their uh, smart platform to get other types of assets. And there's one that just came about, which I will be doing a video on. It's called ZeroSwap or uh, yeah, the zero exchange. And what they do is they use uh, Ethereum, Avalanche, and who's the other one that they use? They use three, Binance, the, yeah, this one. Uh, and so like with this one, I think this could be the actual uh, next big DEX and the next big coin. And it's like ranked number 400. So if you're into utility, this is the one to go to. This one and uh, probably um, Swissborg, 
uh, because they're going to have a major announcement today, but uh, I, I don't know what it is. So yeah, figured I'd flash through the disclaimer here. Nothing Thank you. Is financial advice by Market Rebellion or Digital Asset News. However, I have a, a position in zero. I'm very excited. I've been uh, using this exchange. Um, I think the the swaps and the ability to go cross chain is absolutely revolutionary because. Uh, users on Uniswap, um, you know, you have to deal with Ethereum gas fees. It can be difficult to get out of certain positions. But with Zero, there are certain things that, say, a trader who only uses Binance Chain uses. There's certain assets on Uniswap or other DEXs that use Ethereum that they want to access, but they have to still deal with those Ethereum fees. Right. But through Zero and using a cross-chain decentralized exchange bridge, uh, those fees are virtually eliminated. So this is a huge revolution, and I think Zero is has got a very promising future in store for it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I don't have a position yet, but I will after this video. So if you are going to buy in, just know I'll dump on you. Not just kidding, but uh, do your own research and all that good stuff. So I think we answered the two big questions today. Is the bull on over? I don't think it is. Just taking a look at the stock to flow model, and then what's going to happen? Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Binance chain flowing just to uh, smaller caps and even micro caps. And then should I keep DCing into Bitcoin and Ethereum? This is a question that I have to ask myself all the time. And to me, just like, just like CJ said, it depends on your, your goals, right? All right? How big is your risk tolerance? Do I want to start to sell off some of my Bitcoin and put it into smaller caps? Well, I could if I'm, I'm, a, if I'm one of those people who like, likes to you know, really push the envelope, but it's risky. And, and you have to think to yourself, do I really want to make it this year, right now, 2021, or... Do I want to do something like this? Let me just show you. We can all, I mean, not we can all, I can make it pretty well because I've been dollar cost averaging since 2017 uh, and I've been doing it the whole time. I'm not in the business of losing money. However, if I want to just go, you know what? I still like the position. I still like uh, the teams. I still like what's going on. I'm just going to keep repeating this cycle until 2025 and just maybe get out a little bit and keep it, maybe keep dollar cost averaging uh, a little bit more until the bear market. Like I've always said, I'm going to sell 80% of my alts, 50% of my Bitcoin, get back in and just keep dollar cost averaging. So it's up to you to decide for yourself to do your own research. Do I want to get as rich as I possibly can right now and do my own research of things? Or do I want to say, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, slow and slow and go, see how it, see how it, uh, it becomes. And then just dollar cost average uh, when this bear market comes in. Because again, uh, this is when all the money's made, in my opinion. When it's boring as heck, nothing going on. Anyhow, that's what I got. Yeah, maybe not just the pouring. Maybe you should add depressing. <laughs> it is depressing when you see when you see your, your, your net worth go, wow, I'm that genius. And all of a sudden you're like, what the heck just happened? So anyhow, that's what we got. So CJ, any last words of advice before we wrap it up today? Um, you know, I just think it's important to understand your own goals and uh, to be, you know, responsible, whether if you have dependents, um, like myself personally, I, like I'm one of those guys who's taking, like jumping full in when it comes to risk, um, because I have extra time, you know, but I'm helping my dad in, in cryptocurrency as well, you know, he's new to the space, and he has different goals, because he has less time to make that money. Um, so we're playing things a little bit more conservative on that front. But yeah, that's all I would, well, that's all I would say is just manage risk um, and never put yourself in a position where you can have an uh, permanent, infinite loss. Um, exactly. And then, so th there's one side of that coin. The other side is something like me, late forties, kids and grandkids. And you're just looking to just to make sure that you do the right things so you can actually get them a little bit and, uh, you know, get them ahead in life. And then of course, there's the, there's the other side, which is, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. And uh, I know there's a bunch of those people who watch this channel. It really just depends on what you want to do right now or later. So again, every, everybody's goal is different. Your goals are not my goals or CJ's goals. Make sure it's the right decision for you and do your own research. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate your thumb value. Give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, all that great stuff. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.